In today's video, we're going to talk about VA loan assumptions. And I wanted to give you an overview, but also wanted to explain why these are not closing. Hey, this is Rick Umendorf, and on this channel, I give you my opinions and advice and real talk about mortgages and real estate. So what is all the fuss about VA loan assumptions? Recently, with the increase in rates, and regardless of the market, a VA loan assumption is when a new buyer assumes the liability of an existing VA loan. This can be really good if the VA loan is at a low interest rate. Even though there are some really good loan rates being advertised and showcased as assumable, the problem is that they're not getting to the closing table. Why is that? Well, there's some very simple reasons for it. The first issue that I see is just simply the speed. Assuming a VA loan is not a fast process. In fact, a mainstream lender recently reported that their VA loan assumptions are taking over 60 days to process. Waiting that long is absolutely brutal. And in fact, what you're gonna find out is that many lenders don't even do VA assumptions. Not to mention, statistics are showing that over 12% of VA loan assumptions are actually denied. Probably the bigger issue for the seller is the waiting period. If it's taking so long to do a VA loan assumption or wait for the approval, there's really no protection for the seller. Typically there's contingencies that the buyer needs to meet in order for the process to move forward. In a VA assumption, you're literally just twiddling your thumbs, waiting and hoping and praying that this thing happens. Another issue is the entitlement and liability issue. The intended way a VA loan assumption was to work. A buyer that has their VA benefits would be able to assume the VA loan of the seller and they free up the entitlement of the seller. That's an important fact. The problem is, is that only 14% of all buyers out there are actually VA approved buyers. While it is not impossible for a non VA buyer to assume a VA mortgage, it does cause problems for the seller. First, it continues to use the entitlement of that VA seller. This results in the seller having more restrictive options in using their VA benefits in the future for a new home purchase. Additionally, there is a case of liability. This is something that is completely overlooked. If the entitlement of the seller is not released because you have a non-VA buyer assume the mortgage, the liability is still there for the seller. Here's what I mean. If the new buyer eventually defaults, let's say they do a short sale or they foreclose, this actually counts against the seller. The seller would then lose that portion of their benefit. The seller's not getting a bad marker on their credit, but they are losing that portion of entitlement, which is pretty bad. The money issue. Perhaps the golden dagger in all assumption failures is the requirement to bring huge amounts of cash to the closing table. It is widely misunderstood that the buyer must bring the delta between the assuming loan balance and the amount of the sales price. For example, if you were assuming a VA loan of $400,000 balance and you agreed to purchase the home for $550,000, the buyer has to make up $150,000 in cash, the difference between the loan amount and the sales price. Most buyers seize up at this major cash delta and the deal dies. And there's really no way to bridge that gap with loans. And I'm not done. The buyer must not only assume this major cash delta, they also must assume the payments on that loan. This is also widely misunderstood. Buyers think that they can go in and assume a really low interest rate and then figure they can just go ahead and get the terms that they want, get a new 30 year fixed mortgage amortized over 30 years, but that's not what happens. You're assuming the exact loan of the seller. So if the seller got this 30 year loan, you know, eight years ago, you just assumed a 22 year mortgage payment. <laughs> if that makes sense. This could actually increase the buyer's payment more than what they could have gotten had they just done a new 30-year mortgage at a higher rate. Crazy, right? Let's get to the lender issue. Perhaps the biggest roadblock to doing a VA assumption is the lender. Quite frankly, the lender doesn't have to approve a VA loan assumption. And by the way, not many are. And if the lender is actually doing VA assumptions, the chances of the incoming buyer qualifying for that is actually a lot more difficult than you would think. Why is this? The buyer is not only calculating their payment at the higher payment, right? They're assuming that mortgage, which may be more than what they could qualify for on a normal 30 year fixed rate loan. There's really no exceptions to the rule. They're, they're kind of making you fit into this little box. Oh, what's in the box? Don't be confused. Lenders really don't want to do VA assumptions. What they would prefer is to have the loan paid off and go and use that money and go get another mortgage and make more money. 
money. <laughs> That's the way it works. With all that said, if I have not scared you off already, let's look at a general overview of how you can, in fact, make a VA loan assumption work. The first step is to check with your lender to make sure they actually do VA loan assumptions. So check with your lender first. Number two, have the borrower qualify with the lender. This is a pretty important step and the lender then will qualify them based on the assumption loan qualification standard, which as I mentioned, may be a little bit more strict. This will involve a credit check, the buyer providing documents, just like they were getting a normal loan. Next piece is that the seller must agree to the assumption. The seller may not agree to it. The terms may not be acceptable. You may have a non-VA buyer and the language in this assumption documents may spook the seller. So after the seller puts their documentation in and the buyer is still at work putting their conditions and whatnot, this entire process as mentioned can take over 60 days. The process of being approved is under much more strict guidelines. Well, there you have it. There's a little bit of information that you may or may not have known about VA loan assumptions and why it's so difficult. Would I do a loan assumption? Really, it just depends upon your situation. I would be very hesitant, however, to allow a non-VA home buyer assume your VA loan for a lot of reasons that I've already mentioned. If you have any questions, please comment. This has been Rick Elmendorf, and I will see you on the next video.